Hey, welcome to this video on the web data grid showing you how to enable and use persistent selection. To get things started, let me show you exactly what's involved. Now, I have two grids on this page, both web data grids, and one of them is using paging while the other one is using virtual scrolling. And the idea is, is that you can come up to the grid when you have selection turned on and make multiple selections on the grid. In the past, it was difficult to maintain those selections if you changed pages. But now if I come over and switch to page 2, I can select this item here, number 10, and if I come back to page 1, you'll see that those items still remain selected. And there's just a little bit of code required on the server in order to process this information. Now one of the things you need to keep in mind is the fact that the grid uses certain virtualization features in order to keep performance uh, as high as it is. Now, when we're on this page, all the data items that you see on the page are in scope to the grid. And so if we were to post back and take a look at the selected items, we could see that we could find those individual grid row items and look at the information about it and iterate through them. However, we have a selection on page two, which is out of scope. And so there is a, a technique that you'll have to use in order to find the out of scope items and then get the data keys. And once you have a list of all the data keys of the items that are selected, then you can move on and work with your data repository or with your service or manipulate the data in any way necessary. And virtual scrolling basically works the same way as the paging does. If I select items here, I'll select one and three and then scroll down to the end of the list. And now we see here that we've got some, some other items available. If I click on 74, now the important thing to note is that I'm holding down the control key when I make my multiple selections. If I scroll back up to the top of the list, you'll see that the first two items that I selected still remain selected. Now both of these grids bind to the same selected change event handler and like I said the code's pretty simple so let me go ahead and show it to you now. So now I'm in Visual Studio 2010 and you can see that we've got uh, the script manager on the page which is required in order to use the web data grid and then I have my two instances of the web data grid here's the one with the paging and the virtual scrolling. Let's take a moment and take a look at the configuration of this grid Let's open up the behaviors and you can see that I have paging and row selectors and the selection behavior turned on. As far as paging is concerned, I kept all the default settings. I didn't change anything here, so I clicked on the checkbox for paging and left it at that. Same with row selectors. I just enabled it by clicking the checkbox and left everything alone. The only customization I made to the behaviors was in selection. You can see here that the cell click action is set to row and that means if you click on any cell within the row it will select the entire row. The next thing that I did was enabled cross page selection and this gives us the behavior that we're, we're concerned with of being able to select items, change pages and those selections remain persistent. And then finally row select type, I want to be able to select multiple rows so I, I uh, put this to multiple, you have the none, single and multiple as options there. Now as far as some um, individual customizations to the grid itself. Something that's important, as you're working with the grid, you need to make sure that the data key fields is pointing to the primary key fields that the grid is working with. So in this instance, the grid is bound to the products table from Northwind, and so the primary key value here is uh, the products ID. Other items here, are auto generate columns is set to false, and these items here will be more relevant when we do virtual scrolling because the virtual scrolling uh, requires that you set a height, but I have them at the same dimensions here just for the time being. The only other thing you need to be aware of is that the event that we're handling is the selection dot row selection changed event, and that's bound up to the event handler. So let's take a look at the code, and you can see what's involved. So as selections change within the grid, this event will fire, and the, the selected rows event args is the class that will be available to you that will allow you to query the grid and find out what's changed. So the first thing that I'll do is create a, a generic list of integers in order to store the IDs. Now this may be integers, it could be strings, depending on how your keys are set up within uh, your, your database. You might have some composite keys, so you have to deal with arrays. This is just the products table within Northwind, so it's done very simply. So I, I have a list of IDs, and then I've got a couple variables here that I'm using in order to, to track changes. So as I do casting from how the, the data re lies within the grid because it's stored as an object, I'll set it to this ID, and then this index is just here to track what index we are in the loop because we'll need that in, in certain circumstances. 
So once I get in and start looking at the current selected rows, what I want to do is make each one cast into a grid record. Now remember back when I said that certain items will be in scope and certain items will be out of scope depending on where you are in the grid. So if you select a couple items on the first page and then page to another item, select one more item and then post back to the server, what you'll find is that the first two rows that you selected will show up within the current selected rows collection, but those object instances will be null. And so we need to check and see if the row is null, but it's a part of the collection, then we know that it's out of scope. The data is there, we just have to go and get it a different way than we, you might normally think. If it's out of scope, then we'll go to the current selected rows and we can call the method getIDPair. And this is accessed by the item index. So even though I'm doing a for each, I'm still tracking the index value so that I can use that. So if this is the first record, index will be zero and it'll pull out the pair. And then from there, I can take the, the instance of this ID pair object and convert it to my integer and take the value out of the key. Now again, remember, the grid has to be flexible enough in order to handle any type of keys that you have within your database. So this comes as an array, and so I can just pass in the zero indexer. This is probably what you'll end up doing most often. Pass in that zero indexer, convert it to an integer, and then now I have a value within my ID variable. We'll skip down past uh, this for a moment. And then all I'm doing here is, is asking the list of whether or not the ID is not contained within its items, and if it's not, then I add it in, and then we continue on through the loop. The other instance might be is if you are dealing with a selected row that's actually in scope. So if you selected an item on a page that you're on and then you post it back, then you would, it would not be null. You'd have a hydrated instance of that object, and then it's simply a, a matter of going to data key, the in, index zero at this, for this case, converting that to the integer and then adding it into the list. So once this loop is done, you always have the current list of selected items within the grid. And I have this, uh, this debug statement down here, so I have a place to put the, the breakpoint. But you can see all you need to do is then take that list and make a call to your database or service or any other type of operation that you might need to do. So it works exactly the same way whether you're paging or whether you're doing virtual scrolling. If the grid rows are out of scope, then you have to get the information by going to the get ID pair. If the grid rows are within scope, then you can go directly to the data key and get its value. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.